Hello and welcome to this video. So now we have the back end working for the live price data, we can integrate it into the front end. So the way I'd like the whole app to work here is that when we first start the app, we see what we have here. So we load up the latest saved version of the data.json, so all of these indicators for the various currency pairs. And I'd like that when we click a row, the table disappears, and whatever row we've clicked, say we click the Euro Canadian dollar, we then see the last 50 candles of the M5 candles on a candle chart of those. Now the load data on the top right is irrelevant now because we're loading the data automatically. So when we have a price chart open, we'll use the load data button to close the price chart and show us this table again. So the whole thing is relatively straightforward. The only thing we really need to pay attention to is just the timeout. Remember, every time we load data, we then set a 15 second timeout. Well, we don't want that triggering when we're looking at a chart for example. So back into the code, we'll start uh, our journey of doing this at the top of the app.js and we're going to need to add in some new things into the data here. So we're going to add in something called timer and we'll set that to null. We're going to add something called show prices and we'll set that to false and we're going to add an array, an empty array to start with which is called price data. So to explain quickly what these are, timer, you'll see how it's used in a minute, so I won't explain that one. Show prices is simply going to be set to true or false depending on whether we're showing the prices graph or we're showing the table. So when the app first loads, show prices is false. When we click on a row, show prices will be switched to true. And we'll use that inside view to tell view what we want to see. The price data is then simply the data we'll load for the given pair from our live API. So one of the things we'll need to do is when we've set this time out here, imagine that we've just loaded the data, we've got 14, 13 seconds till the next call, and then we select to see some prices. Well, this timeout is still running. So we want to be able to cancel that and say, please don't call the load data anymore because we're somewhere else and we don't need it at the moment. So the way we do that is we can actually return a reference to this timeout. And that's why we've declared the timer. So if I type this dot timer is equal to set timeout, I can then in other parts of the code use this timer here to cancel this timeout call. So dropping down into methods, we need to add a couple of new functions to do the functionality that we need. The first thing we're going to add in is a load prices function, and that'll be async and take in the pair. So when we load the prices, the first thing we want to do is clear out any existing prices we've loaded. Now I'm going to go up to the load data function and just copy and paste this code here. Save a little bit of time. And of course, instead of the KPI data, we want to load our price data here. And we want to load our price data with the pair. And in this case, we don't need the cache on the end of this. Then we get our data.json, and then we don't want to set our KPI data, we want to set our price data. And when we finish loading up our price data, we can set show prices equal to true, because we want now to show the prices. However, we're not going to call this function directly from the button press. We're going to call it from another function. The actual button press is going to be on a function that we'll call row selected, and that takes in the pair. And inside here is where we're going to stop this interval that we might have set inside the load data. And the way we do this is really simple with JavaScript. We just call a function called clear interval, send in the reference that we have to that particular interval, and that will stop any planned interval from firing. Once we've done that, then we can then call the load prices function with our particular pair. So to wire all this up, we need to go into the index.html. We'll leave the button at the top for now exactly as it is, although we could change the text here, I guess, to home. We haven't actually set this functionality yet, but we'll do it in a minute. And the important part comes on the table row here. So we want to be able to click for every single table row, a particular table row, and then react to whatever pair has been clicked. So we'll type at click is equal to, and then I think we called the function row selected. And as an argument, we want to send in the item dot pair. What we also need to do here is add a key onto the row. So a unique identifier for the row so that view knows what row we're actually selecting. And behind the scenes, view will be creating unique IDs for each of these rows. Now we know that the pairs are unique, so we can use the item dot pair for a unique key on each of our rows. So what this will do when we click it, hopefully, is call the row selected function in app.js with the pair as an argument, it'll stop any interval, and then it'll call this asynchronous load prices function, which will go to our Flask API with the pair, get our data, and then also set show prices equal to true. Now we said that when we show the prices, we want the table not to be shown because we want to show a price chart. So up on this table container here, we're going to use something called a vif 
which is a directive in view, a very handy one. And we'll just say that we want to show this div and anything contained inside it if the show prices is equal to false. Otherwise, we don't want to show it. And now what we can do is we can go down the bottom here and make a new uh, div with the, let's say the class price chart. So it'll be our price chart. And this div is going to be shown if pr show prices is equal to true. And for now what we'll do, we won't draw the chart because I don't want the video to go too long, but what we'll do is we'll just use this JSONifier just so we can see the information and make sure that it's loading okay. So we'll say that json.stringify and then we'll be stringifying our price data which comes from the uh, from the data parts of the view and then we can put this null and this too as well. So what should happen then when the app loads, I'll just double check, is show prices should be false, which means the table will be showing. And then when we click a row, we're going to hit row selected with our particular pair, clear out any timers and call load prices. Now when we call load prices, we set off an asynchronous request to fetch the price data from our Flask API, set the data, and only then do we set the show prices is true because we've loaded everything and then we can now show the actual prices. So going into our web app then, I'm going to do a refresh here and just try and click on one of these. And you can see that in fact, it's worked. It's loaded up the prices for me. The problem is now our home button, of course, isn't working. We've actually demanded that we load some of the data there, I think, and set a new timeout and stuff, but the home button isn't working. So that's the last thing that, uh, that we need to fix. So back in app.js, then we can write a new function and we'll call this one go home. And what we're going to do in this one as well is clear any running intervals that we have in case anything's going on. And now we want to sh set the show prices to equal to false. And what we want to do then is go into the process of loading our data. And of course, last but not least, we need to take this go home function and make sure that we're calling this go home rather than load data from our home button. So back into the web app then, I'll just do another refresh and hopefully everything should be working. So if we go pound US dollar, we can see we get the 1.39, that seems about right. We've got our candles in a list. And if I click home, I'm back onto the app. Euro Japanese yen, the prices all look different. Home, and I'm back onto the app and so on. Good, so the next step then would be instead of seeing this uh, array of prices like this is to actually draw ourselves a nice candle chart on the web app. And then we're done with the web app. So thanks very much for watching and see you in the next video.